să ne încercarea grea, Te vrea cu gelozia, Să birui doar așa-i putea să-i cânt-o venicie. Așa e calea către cer, e o luptă, nu mai țin minte nici. Nu mai țin, dacă văd dacă văd, dai din carte. Nu mai e cam uitat, nu mai cânt. Ia uite cărțile aici. Dar ce crezi că mai țin minte? Și nici nu văd că n-am luat o echenare. Mai țu cu asta, dar se plică. O, păstorul meu iubit, o Iisuse, Eu la tine am venit, o iertă-mă, De la tine niciodată, Doamne, nu voi mai pleca, De frim ește-mă la tine acum. De la tine niciodată, Doamne, nu voi mai pleca, De frim ește-mă la tine acum. Tu m-ai scăpa de la moarte, o Doamne, Și ți-ai arătat în mine dragostă, De aceea niciodată nu uita ce mi-ai.
my wife, Lydia, and uh, Helen are going to come and sing uh, one of grandmother's favorite songs. Yes. Hello everyone. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Pray the Lord touches your heart today. Amen. This is a song that me and my grandmother used to sing. Um, and it's one of her favorites, not her ultimate favorites. Favorite. She's got quite a few. She had quite a few favorites. She still does. <laughs> um, but this is a song that we used to sing. And for those of you that do not speak uh, Romanian, it basically talks about the New Jerusalem, the kingdom of, of of God, and how we long to go into the kingdom of God. We long to walk upon those golden streets. We long to be in the presence of the Lord. And it talks about, I want to come to you so that I can end all my sadness, all my crying, all my, uh, my weaknesses. I, I want to be in your presence um, because everything on this earth is nothing and it all vanishes and uh, I cannot find my happiness. So we're going to go ahead and sing that Romanian with my sister here, Helen. Amen? Okay. And you have a copy if you want to follow along, please, and help us sing, okay? <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. That was very nice. Uh, I, I'm sure you all have the little pamphlet. My wife worked many, many hours till 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning working, trying to get everything right. And from her heart came the words that I'd like to recite to you of the eulogy that she wrote in remembrance of her grandmother. Virginia Aldi was born in Albesh de Moselle, Romania. Forgive me if I mispronounced it. On December 30th, 1930. She was the fifth child out of eight siblings. And Virginia was raised by her mother, Elizabeth, after her father passed away while she was still young. Her mother was a Christian who poured God's love and kindness into Virginia's life and desired for all of her family to be saved and reunited in heaven. Virginia lived most of her life in the beautiful foothills of the Carpathian Mountains in the wonderful little cottage that she had built. Her mother, Virginia, she cared for her in her later years and also shared the property in a separate cottage. Virginia loved the mountain scenery, the forests, and living off the land was her joy. She enjoyed watching her garden grow, and she found solace and solitude by walking through the corn. She liked the soft breeze and the harvest glow and the millions of stars that were shining so close. She was a hard worker, and she managed the farm productively while also working many other jobs. And she deeply cared for her grandchildren, and many special memories were created on that majestic mountain. She gathered and she didn't scatter, had wisdom and made a way for herself and her family. She was strong and very self-sufficient with a great sense of humor. And she brought a lot of laughter and cheer to many and enjoyed doing so. She was quick, intelligent, and loved to rhyme with clever verbiage and silly songs. In 2000, she moved to the U.S. to be with her daughter, Poitza whom she missed and deeply loved. Many times she would reminisce of her old mountain life, but her love for immediate family was much greater, and so she decided to be laid to rest in Oregon and set up by her mother in Romania, which she had also desired. Virginia fully gave her heart to Jesus in her later years. She then became very devoted to God and regretted that she had waited so long. At times she would tear up and say, I wish I would have done it while my mom was alive. She prayed so hard for me. She would advise others to not wait too long and to not waste their time. She was grateful to God that she had made it before her time ended. She loved to sing in church, read her Bible, pray, and minister the good news to others. Virginia survived by her daughter and family. She was blessed with a granddaughter and four grandsons, a great-grandson and three great-granddaughters, which I might add, she really loved. They'd come into the room and she would just smile. On December 30th, 2020, while she was surrounded and being comforted and ministered to by her loving family, she went to be with her Lord and to be with her mother, Elizabeth, whom she longed to see. So thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus, for her great legacy and the family line that passed down to us through her because of your great love. And this was written from the heart of Lydia Cavacci, her granddaughter. At, at this point, I am sharing uh, some remembrance. One of her grandsons, Ben, has some words he'd like to share. So if you'd like to go ahead and come up.
in this case, 90 years in a matter of minutes. It's impossible to do so. So I'm not going to attempt that. We'd be here for weeks. <clears throat> I can only share a few special moments and thoughts that are important to me in remembrance of her. She was indeed a great lady. Uh, as children, we spent a lot of our summers at her farm. And uh, some of our most fondest memories, I don't speak for myself, come from there as in our, in our youth. Um, uh, there was so much to learn from her, and she, I didn't realize it at the time, but, um, you know, we are the sum of the people that nurture us and influence us, especially in our youth. Um, she taught me strength. She was one of the strongest people, women, in my life. And uh, uh, I, I, I can imagine uh, not being able to um, attribute any of that to her because she early on uh, I, I saw how hard she worked and she ran for the most part alone this farm also managed to, to work very physically laborious jobs and also run an entire farm which had animals she it is as as She's never like slept. Basically, I don't. I don't remember her taking a lot of downtime. She was always doing something. So that I think is instilled in us and her and her grandchildren for sure. Uh, that's something that we learned as an example from her. And I, um, I'm really happy to have had her in my life and show me these things. Um, she was also very independent, and um, I think I get a lot of that from her. Um, she, she definitely did a lot alone and she was able to um, persevere and uh, win at life because she was very determined and that is important um, to be able to, to be a strong person and to be able to um, manage difficult situations in life and her life wasn't easy. It was very difficult, and she was able to do so, uh, to get through it, and um, in the end, I think she lived a really good life, a great life. She was incredibly funny, always with a quick smile, with a quick joke, and probably the most important thing that I've learned from her is never to take anything too serious. She was always, always, always joking, and no matter what, how else, how bad of a mood you're in, if you just talk to her for five minutes without even realizing, she would automatically flip it around, and somehow you'd be in higher spirits. But that was that was her, her gift. That was her gift for sure. So um, she was a, a great grandmother, a grandmother, and a mother, and she'll be sorely missed. Um, just wanted to say that I'm, I'm really fortunate to have had her in my life, and um, we'll miss her a lot each and every day. And um, again, I I wouldn't be the same person that I am today <coughs> without her influence. And we love her. Yeah. And at her at her last moment here on her, um, we were really fortunate to, to have been there and. I swear, as she was passing, she, we're, my sister was telling her how much we love her, and she was reading Psalm 23, and in her last breath, she looked at my sister as if she acknowledged and understood that. It was a really touching moment. So, she'll never be forgotten, and I really want to thank everyone for coming and honoring her in her life. Thank you.
we're going to sing a song together, uh, an English one this time. Uh, it's called Amazing Grace. We're not going to sing all of it. We're going to sing some verses. Uh, if you know it, sing along with us. If you don't know it, just enjoy it. Let the Lord touch your heart.
the love of God, that many things will open in our lives. We would have all kinds of confirmation. We won't doubt so much. You know, we, we will understand so many things. And I'm grateful for His love. I'm grateful for His amazing grace. I'm grateful for who the Lord is. And although we are here, by the way, I'm Virginia's granddaughter, Lydia, for those of you that do not know. I love my grandma. She is so beautiful. I've never seen her look so beautiful as I did today. I mean, she's, she was beautiful, but today she just seems so at peace, so at rest. That stress of life is gone. Amen. And uh, I know she's in heaven with the Lord. I have confirmation because I, I knew her life. I knew how much she loved the Lord. I knew how many times she would just tear up when she would read, when she would pray, when she would, uh, uh, when she would sing songs. She was a woman of God, and as you have read in that, uh, her life, she gave her life to the Lord a little later in her life, and she regretted that all her life. She said, I am so happy with the Lord. I love God. I love what He's done for me, and I wish I would have allowed Him to come into my life sooner. I wish I would have allowed His Holy Spirit to pour into my life sooner, that I would have been a better person for others, a better example for others. Amen? And uh, no one is perfect in this world. You know, Grandma wasn't perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Amen. We do things we shouldn't do. We say things we shouldn't do. But uh, the Spirit of the Lord that lives in us helps us to become better. To He fills us with His love. He fills us, amen, with, with His Holy Spirit. He knows. He knows you from, from the beginning of time, before you were even born. He says, I knew you. I set you apart. Amen. God has a call and a purpose for your life. And I'm just here to tell you that He richly loves you. He richly wants a closer relation with you. For those of you that do not know the Lord, I believe it was my greatest desire for my grandma that at her funeral, I would let you know about Him a little more. Amen. That we would lead you into a place where you can know how to find the Lord. Amen. But first of all, to the family that you lost this loved one, including myself. I know it's hard, and I know that there's a time of grieving, there's a time of sadness, there's a time of sorrow. But there should be a time of celebration because she is with her Lord and Savior. Amen. She is with her mother. She desired to go. It was hard for her. She was getting older. She was having problems. During the last 10 years of her life, she struggled with many health issues. And uh, she would tell me, when I die, I'm going to be happy because I'm finally going to be done with all of this. She would always tell me, make me beautiful, make sure I look good in that, and, and then, you know, and fix my hair. <laughs> and I mean, not that she, she wasn't a diva or anything, but you know, she wanted to look presentable. And uh, anyways, uh, there should be a time here where we're celebrating her life. We should be celebrating who she was and the legacy she left in her family, like Ben was saying. And, then, and although we do grieve, uh, she was 90, and it was time for her. The Lord called her, amen? It was time. So the Lord is close to the brokenhearted, which is us, and saves those who are crushed in the spirit. There's nothing that the Lord cannot do for you. He is so full of compassion and love. He has created your heart. He knows your ins and outs. He is here to comfort you. He is here to surround you with his love. And uh, he is so good. He is so good, amen? Amen. So do not fear, for I am with you, says the Lord. Do not be dismayed, for I am with you. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Hallelujah. You know, to God's right hand is, a, is special because it is, it is powerful. It's full of strength. And when you're set out at the right hand of God, you're set out for a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I love what Jesus did. Because he gave us victory against death. So what if we die? We die for Christ. And if we live, we live for Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 55 says, Death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. So victory swallowed up death. So here was death. Victory came, overtook it, swallowed it. Amen. Why? Because Jesus and what he did on the cross. Amen. Because of the Lamb of God who take it away the sin of the world. Because the sting of death is sin, but Christ is eternal life. Amen. Oh, death, where is your sting?
Christ is asking, where is your sting, death? Where did it go? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? Hades is hell. Hell, where is your victory? You have none. Over the people that choose to live a life for God, that choose to turn their lives and focus on God, there is no death. Even though we might physically die, we have eternal life in Christ in heaven. The sad factor is, folks, that we all will rise again. And as I will read later, where will we go? Where are we going to go? Are we set to live here forever? We obviously see not. Some of us will die in our old age. Some of us might die younger than we want or expect. We do not know the day when we go. God knows the day. But what we do know is that we can make our lives right with the Lord. We can get right with God. We can receive His peace. We can restart fresh, new, be born again, be a new creation. See, long ago, God created us to be in paradise with Him. He created us to be in the Garden of Eden. Sadly to say, man failed. Eve and Adam together ate from the apple. Precious Adam was right next to Eve. It wasn't just Eve's fault. <laughs> she gave to the man who was right next to him. And they ate of the apple. And they had to come down to earth and live a life as we do, where we feel pain, sadness, all kinds of things that God did not intend. We wanted, he wanted us to be happy in paradise with Him. Amen? He wanted to walk side by side with us. So because of that corruption, uh, it was difficult uh, to continue on uh, for us in a life that God intended for us. However, Jesus came as the second Adam, and Jesus did what Adam did. He undid what Adam did. So now there is a chance for all of us to go back, to go back to that beautiful garden of Eden, even better, even better than that, amen? There's a chance he made a way for us if we would just listen and obey and follow him, amen? Glory to God. Uh, well, I want to go to that city where grandma is and great grandma. I want all of us to go there. I love there's, because of the Lord in my heart, I love all of you, some of you that I don't even know. I love just because God's love is in me, <laughs> and God loves everyone. And I want us to make it to that city up in, on the hill, amen? I want us to all be there someday. Great-grandma, when I left for Mania, her mother, I hugged her and kissed her, and she said, I might not see you again here, but I will see you in heaven. And I think of that. When I left, you know, we were children, we were excited, we were going to America, Woohoo! Um, although we were sad and crying for our grandmas, I never thought that, you know what? Because in my child mind, I never thought, this is going to be the last time I see great-grandma on earth. And this is might be the last time I see grandma in Romania. I'm fortunate that she came here. We're all fortunate that she came here, and we had a wonderful continuing childhood or adulthood with, with her in our lives. It was a blessing. But the people in our lives, we must love and honor and respect, and we must... Point the way to heaven for them. We have to live our lives in a way where, you know, whenever we can go any time, and what, we can't take anything with us when we go. Just like in the book of Job, naked you came, naked you shall return. There's nothing we take with us. So we strive and work hard, and we do all these things, and then we, where is our time with God? Where is our legacy that we're leaving for our family? Where is the things that truly matter? God wants us to think about those things. Amen. And Revelation 21, 4 says, And God himself will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. This is the former things here now. They're going to all pass away, pass away, pass away. What truly remains is what God has in plan for you, for us. Amen. And whether you're willing to obey his call. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I think about that scripture that says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Sometimes our hearts get led astray. And Jeremiah speaks about this. That our heart is deceitful above all things and wicked. Who can understand it? But it also says that God searches our hearts and minds. And that he will give a reward 
to those according to their deeds. Amen. I think about sometimes we just need to have a heart check. You know, sometimes funerals reminds us that we're not here forever. And where, where are we going afterwards? Whether we believe it or not, whether we agree with the Bible or not, whether whatever the weather is, it's the truth and it's going to happen. There is an afterlife for us. We can't stop it. Because God is in control of all things and God is your maker. You are not your own maker. God is your maker. You can try to make your own world as much as you want it to be, but if you leave God out of it, you're going to lose. The Bible says that all idols will perish. And if we hold on to our idols too tightly, we're going to perish with them. We want to hold on to God. In a world that is ever changing and all kinds of things are happening, don't you want the Lord to be your saving grace, your rock, your fortune, your, your fortune, everything you've got, your fortress, your high tower? He's the only thing that's going to last. Everything else is shaking. Nothing will remain. It says hope. Hope is one of the things that will remain, but love is the greatest. You know, faith is another, but love is the greatest. If you have the Lord in your heart, we must live out of love. We must live out of that love that He has for us. We must put away all types of childish things, all types of things that entice us into a place of darkness. And it's so easy to do that sometimes because we just go on about our lives, we get busy, there's so much responsibility, problems, we're focusing on, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do this, ah. Oh. And then we're just like, easy and easily forget about our Bible, we forget to go to church, we forget to you know, praise our Creator, and, and we just, this is what the devil really wants. He wants us to focus so much on our lives where we just forget about God and forget about what is to come, forget about the Word, and, and we should not live a life like that. We should strive, we should strive to follow Christ. Amen? Because that's what matters in the end. Hallelujah. You know, the, the foolish virgins and the, the, the wise and foolish virgins, I think about that. <laughs> It's kind of a, a, a door opener, it's a, it's a heart opener, it's a, when the door was shut completely, because they, they could not come in, the other, the other five that did not have enough oil, and they went to buy some, it was too late, and the door was shut, and then they banged on the door, open on to us, open on to us, he opened, he said, I don't know you, depart from me, I don't know you, I do not want that to be me. I don't want that to be any of us in this room. And Grandma would have not wanted this to be any of us in this room. So I ask him, in the name of Jesus, that you would let the Lord touch you today, that you would let the Lord uh, speak to your heart, that you would no longer, whatever, you know your own heart, you know if you're running from Him, from him you know if you're uh, upset with Him, or you're hurt or offended, whatever the reason is, God wants to heal your heart. Sometimes we get mad at Him, and it's not really His fault. <laughs> Sometimes we, we do that a lot. Uh, there is a beautiful Lamb of God, Jesus, who is waiting for you and wants you to accept Him. He came into this world so that you may have life. Don't let that be a waste for you. Let that life run in you. Let that life fill you up. Life is hard enough as it is. It's, isn't it better to, to, to have it with the Lord? Isn't it better to, to go through all these hard things with God and be on His side? Because He doesn't put you to shame and He helps you through all things. Jesus came as a lamb at first. And He's done everything in His power to save you, to love you, to show you so much. But when He comes back, Scripture tells us he's going to come back as a judge. And that's kind of hard for some people to believe. It. But uh, it's the truth. God doesn't lie. I'm just going to read John 5, 25 to 29. It says, uh, Most assuredly I say to you that the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will live. Grandma heard the voice of the Lord. She's living with them already in heaven. Amen? And when she died, I'm sure the Lord, you know, 
the Lord says that precious is the sight of those that die, and in His sight, it's so it's so precious to Him. He, I'm, I'm sure He didn't abandon her. He didn't abandon her. He didn't just say, "Oh yeah, you you you, you know you were a Christian for so long, you did everything I asked, and now I'm just gonna let you be." No, He said, "You know, those who hear will, will live." For as the Father has life in Himself, so He has granted the Son to have life in Himself, and has given Him authority to execute judgment also. So, Jesus will be the judge when He comes back. He will come on those clouds <laughs> with witnesses, those that died in His name. He will come, the trumpet sounding. As the Bible says that people are just going to fall to their knees because it's too powerful, too strong. The terror is too great. <laughs> They're going to fall, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every devil, too. Hallelujah. It says that many will try to hide on the rocks and stones and caves because of what they've done. The condemnation is so great in their lives. See, when we don't have... Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save it. The world is already condemned. You and I, without the Lord, are already condemned. We have a stamp that the enemy has already put on us. Only he can lift that off of us. Only he can lift that burden, that sin, everything that is not of God off of us and make us a new creation. Amen. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who hear the grape, from the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. So see, the truth is, you can say, oh, I can live my life and do what I want. I don't need the Lord. When I die, I just die, nothing will happen. That's not true. When you die, you will rise from the dead. You will either go with the Lord in heaven. Sadly to say, there are many, sadly to say, that will refuse God, will spit in His face, just like there was many before. There are now many will reject everything he has to say. And it's not Christ and it's not God that sends him to hell. Because God clearly says the hell was created for the devil and the demons and all of his angels. Not God's angels, but the devil's angels. It is not God that's going to send you there. It is your own condemnation that you were already born with. Amen? It is, it's, it's your sin that you didn't allow to let God cleanse you. I'm telling you this with love. I'm telling this, I'm saying it to myself too. I can fall any time. I can die any time. I'm no better than anyone else. Uh, but God would say to us, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Christ is the only way to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and he is the bridge that takes us to God. We have too much sin. We needed a ultimate sacrifice of the cleansing blood of the Lamb in order for us to be bridged back to God. It says, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. So he's going to come again. He's not going to abandon us. That wherever I am, you will also be. And where I go, listen to this, you know, and you know the way. <laughs> so, the word tells us we know. We know where he's going, where he where he went. We know where he's at. And and we know how to get there if we read the word. And that's where grandma is. It's special. It's special that she is in that wonderful place that she longed so much to see. You know, the Bible also says, Do not be deceived. God is not a mocker. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows into the flesh will reap the works of the flesh and corruption, but he who sows into the spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. See, we can't plant cucumber seeds and expect tomatoes. We cannot plant cactus seeds and expect olives. Whatever we sow in our lives, if we sow into the flesh and give it everything at once and live off the flesh and oh, all the flatness of the world and everything that the devil uh, dances us with and loves to just parade us around, then we are going to receive not a very good reward. But if we sow into the Spirit of God, if 
we receive the Holy Spirit, if we receive the things of the Lord, if we live our life, it says he who loves his life here on earth will lose it. And he who loves will lose his life here on earth will gain it. And that is the goal. That is the goal for us, is to realize we're just here for a split of a second. When you put eternity next to our life, this is a split of a second. And I don't have time to go into it, but I had a testimony where I went to heaven and hell. And God showed me hell. And I remember I was, it was so terrible. And I remember that it felt like it was never ending. I could never die. And then I also went to heaven. He showed me how beautiful that was. He was showing me both. He said, choose. <laughs> Amen? And, and it's not going to be uh, easy being in hell. We're, we would have a torturous time. Why would we not want life? Why would we not want what the Lord has for us? This is my grandmother's song. I believe it's Psalm 116. It says, For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. That's what grandma's doing. For what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What could we give him? Our hearts. He wants that more than anything. He longs for your love. He longs to have a relationship with you. Can we ever give him anything better than that? We can give him all of the world, all the treasures. He doesn't want it. He already <laughs> had the opportunity to receive it, and he rejected it because his love for his people was greater than for him to be a king of the world for a temporary time. He's king forever in heaven for all times. Amen? I will take up the cup of salvation. That's grandma. She took up her cup of salvation, the blood of Jesus. And, and all that it entails to be saved, and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. I will worship and honor, pay his, your vows to worship, to honor him, to live your life as a legacy for the Lord. Precious is the sight of the Lord and the death of his saints. See, Jesus, he is so sweet and so wonderful. Even when we die, He doesn't abandon us. He never abandons us. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Even when you die, He doesn't. He's there with the family. He's there with everyone. He is so wonderful and so powerful. You know, God wants a heart of repentance from us. I love David and the Bible, and I know many people don't like David because of what happened with Bathsheba, and I understand that was wrong. He knows it was wrong. But many people have criticized him over and over and wouldn't let that go. <laughs> but I love how he repented. He repented in such a pure and precious way. He says, Create in me a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your gracious spirit. The sacrifices of God are, bro uh, of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. See, when we come before the Lord with a broken heart, with, with re true repentance, you know, many people repent for many things. I've heard people say things, if you give me this girl, I'm going to serve you all my life. <laughs> if you give me this scar, I'm going to serve you all my life. Uh, that's not the kind of repentance God is looking for. He's looking for true heart repentance where we have, uh, well, we are led by, by godliness and His Holy Spirit. He wants godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow is when you feel bad temporarily and like, eh, but then you go back to it. Godly sorrow is when you, you have a, a conviction, a true conviction from God, amen, where, um, where it actually hurts. Your sin actually hurts you. And you realize how you've hurt others. And you think about how messed up it is. <laughs> you think about how, wow, you know, Lord, how me to be better. Wash this filth off of me, God. Wash it. I don't want it on me. Lord, give me yours. When Jesus started his ministry, he said, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That means it's nearby, just around the corner. What happens if your next turn was Jesus coming? I just want us to know he loves us so much. He wants each and every one of us to make it in this room. You know that? He wants each and every one of us to have a personal, loving, wonderful relationship with him. To live in the fruits of the Spirit, amen, to live uh, and love as He calls us to live. 
you know, in love, joy, kindness, peace, patience, kindness, uh, gentleness. He wants us to to live in in his in his ways. You know, I was thinking about Lazarus and the, the rich man and how Lazarus on earth was so poor and so needy and he longed to eat from this man's table. He would get some crumbs here and there. And, and La this rich man, you know, he didn't want God. Lazarus loved the Lord. When they both died, Lazarus was with God in the bosom of Abraham. This man went to Hades. And he was being tormented. And he kept saying, send Lazarus at least to dip his finger in some water for me because I'm so thirsty. And the angel said, we can't. There's a barrier between you and us. And you cannot transfer in and out. And he said, uh, at least send him, send Lazarus to my, to my father's house. I have five brothers. And they need to be saved. They need to know about this place so that they don't come here. And you know what the angel said? If they don't listen to, the, to Moses and to the prophets... They will not be convinced when somebody from the dead comes back. And I feel like God is saying that to us. There are many prophets in this world. If we don't listen to the voice of the Lord through the prophets, there's also many false prophets. We must watch out in Jesus' name. They have to be led by the spirit of the Holy One and not by a strange spirit or a spirit of divination. But we don't even need prophets. We have the word of God. However, God does say, you know, to to have to be able to stand together, go to church, pray, you know, follow his ways. But I'm just saying, if you don't have anyone in your life who is a prophet or anyone who is a pastor or anyone you have the word of God, you can find it anywhere. We're still in a time a day where we can actually go and buy a Bible. Amen. And uh, in the end, the Lord says, all will pass. Speaking in tongues will pass, prophecies will pass, everything will pass. The only thing that will remain is love, is love. So although he calls these things together as a testimony of Jesus Christ, these things will pass, everything but love. And we have to fill our hearts up. We have to fill our hearts with this love, this peace, this joy. We have to have enough oil in our lives, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God. I just, um, I want to, I, I, you know, I was praying to the Lord and I, I asked him, uh, what, uh, how can I, how can I show them? How can they be saved? I mean, you know, I mean, it's all over the Bible and it, it takes a long time to read the Bible and people have to be devoted. But before you leave today, I don't want you to leave not knowing how you can be saved. I really felt from God that this is what grandma's, uh, desire would have been for each and every one of us, especially her family, that when they left this place today, that they would be saved, that they would know Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So I came up with something, since Grandma loved pie, I came up with something called salvation pie. <laughs> so it's not that hard. First, the Bible says we must repent. We must acknowledge that we have sins in our lives that we need to be forgiven for. And no one can do that but Christ, Jesus. Ezekiel 18.32 says, For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. God says, turn and live. I have no pleasure in you dying without me. We have to invite him in our hearts. We have to invite him in our lives. We have to receive Jesus in our heart. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. So we have to repent, receive Him in our hearts. Amen. We have to recognize uh, that He is a Savior, and He is your Savior. That Jesus is the key to, to life, salvation, heaven, and to God. He is the perfect Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is worthy. John 14, verse 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We must believe in your heart. You must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, but not just Lord, but that He is your Lord. Because in the book of James it says, even the devils believe and tremble, but they're not going to go to heaven because they don't, 
want him to be his Lord. They, 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 they don't want the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Lord. They want the enemy, the saint, to be their Lord. So we have to declare him to be our personal Lord, our Savior. Amen? Um, Romans 10, 10 says, For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Scripture says, Whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Whoever calls upon the whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're, we're all a whosoever, right? You're a whosoever, I'm a whosoever. You don't have to be some special, wonderful person to be saved. That is a gift of God's grace. We are saved through faith, through Jesus Christ, by faith. Amen. So that no man can boast. That's what the Bible says. It is his free gift. We also have to believe that he died on the cross for your forgiveness, for your sins to be forgiven. You have to believe that I have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, that you have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven, that Jesus raised from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and that you can be born again, cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and be a new creation as he calls you to be. So that means a new creation is no longer I that lives, but Christ in me. Therefore, I want to change from glory to glory, as the Word of God says. You know, when we come to Him, we come with all our brokenness. I came to Him. I was still struggling with a lot of sin. I was having a hard time. But it was Him that helped me each and every way, a, a step of my life that has brought me into a better place with Him. Uh, a lot of times when you come to him and if you get rid of everything and, and you know you start doing things religiously and, and not from a relation point of view with him, you're probably going to go back to those things. You have to do it out of, out of a true heart, out of love. Christ would rather you come to him with a struggling of, of an addiction of some kind and asking him for help and saying, I can't do this, I need your help, I can't let go of this, please help me, than for you to get rid of it and then go back to it few months later because you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't do this because you can't do it on your own it's only through the power of the holy spirit that you can do things it's only through the power of him that you can let go of all the things of the world amen hallelujah praise god and then of course uh there's there's more things and after you receive the lord in your heart uh i don't have time to go into all of that but if you want to, you can find me, but you know, he wants us to receive the Holy Spirit. I'll just say it fast. He wants us to get baptized in water. Also, uh, John was saying, you know, he baptized with water for repentance of sin, but there's one coming that he cannot even tie his shoe because he's so unworthy, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son, and he baptized us with Holy Spirit and with fire. He wants his people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's the only way we're going to make it towards the end. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit. It is the life that sustains us. It is Christ Himself, the hope of glory in us. Amen. We're supposed to preserve and hold on to our salvation because Philippians 2.12 says, Work out your own salvation and fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do His good pleasure. So it's not your will anymore. It's His will. Amen. It's what He expects of you, what He likes of you, what He wants to bless you with. Amen. Hallelujah. And we don't do these things uh, because it's we have to do it as a, a work. We do it because we love Christ so much that all these works become faith. Uh, everything is a faith-based. Amen? It says works and faith go together. Not just works without faith. And not just faith without the works. Amen? We do it together. And He helps us. So hallelujah. Praise, praise be to the Lord. I just want to close with the prayer of salvation. Uh, and then after that, I just want to share a couple memories about my grandma. But I would like all of us to close our eyes and bow our heads. Um, for those of you that are here and have never received Jesus in their lives, I would dearly ask you to please accept Him today. He is the Lord and Savior of your life. There's no one in this world that loves you more more than, than He does. And for those that have received Jesus, you can pray for those other ones that have not. You can also, you can also say the prayer again. It doesn't matter. Christ is okay with you saying this prayer time and time again. In fact, most of us should say it more often. Amen.
So Lord Jesus, you are truth and you are the light of the world. I ask that you would forgive me for I have rebelled against you. I repent and turn away from the sins I have done to do them no more. And when I do, Lord, I pray that you would forgive me as you have enormous amounts of grace and forgiveness. I accept your love and forgiveness for me. Please, come, be my Savior. For you have said that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Save me, Lord Jesus, and come into my heart forever. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Receive me, Lord. Let me have the strength to follow you in your ways. Let me be filled with more and more of you each and every day, Father. And I just thank you for giving me the gift of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a scripture for you. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth with singing before you. And all the trees of the fields shall clap their hands. The Bible says, all the angels, all heaven rejoices over a sinner that just gave their life to the Lord. And I just love the parties in heaven when that happens. I didn't want to share about my grandma before because I didn't want to cry. And I've been asking for strength not to cry. But I've shared so many beautiful times with grandma growing up. Uh, I remember her tucking me in bed, rubbing my back, telling me all kinds of stories, fun things, uh, cheerful things. Uh, she taught me how to be, um, you know, gracious and how to how to how to stand strong. Uh, she was very much an encourager. I remember when I would feel down or sad about things, I would go to her and she would encourage me with the Lord and say, "Don't worry about it. You know, God has this, and <laughs> you know, He's with you. He's not gonna, you know, He's, he's He knows what you're going through." Things like that. I remember that um, her and Adrian, my oldest brother, uh, used to go every year to this place called, I think, I forgot what it's called, Bogarash or something, and they would get these little sweet little strawberries, and um, they're called, uh, I forgot what they're called in Romania now, sorry, Fraj. <laughs> And I would want I wanted to go over here, but she's like, no, you're too little, you have to stay here, and you know, and I would just miss her and my brother so much because they would be gone for a few days, and most of it was walking. And they would bring a bunch of those sweet little strawberries, which I loved so much, and then she would make, you know, jam from, from that from them. You know, she was very self-sufficient, she would make buttermilk and <laughs> uh, it was tradition for Romanian families back then, especially in the farmland, to raise a pig all year long, and then at the end, before Christmas, you cut it, you make sausages and bacon and all that. I used to help out with all that, and I, I used to enjoy just learning so much about, I can actually survive on a farm because of this lady, if I had to. Uh, we shared a lot of beautiful memories in that place, up in that mountain. She loved that place, and uh, she was a good woman. She really was. And so, be happy today that she is with the Lord. Um, I know that there's a time of grieving and sadness, and God can comfort you with that. But know that she is in a better place. And in fact, she would say, don't cry for me, cry for yourselves. You're the one still in a place where it's tough to be. You're the one still in a place where it's not easy to make it, and you need the Lord in your lives. Amen. God bless everyone. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this point, uh, we've got someone who would like to share a song with us. Uh, Sylvia, are you ready? Yeah. 
So on that note, uh, John, would you like to come up and share something? And I think you had a song you were going to share also with us. And thank you. Am un cântec aici acasă când nu știu la Încerc să mă abțin. Dar Dumnezeu este Cel care ne dă putere tuturor. Aș dori să mulțumesc asistenței care ați avut dragostea și virea să puteți veni într-un loc ca acesta care, spunem noi, nu este așa de frumos, dar nu avem de ales. Trebuie să trecem pe aici. Și cu această ocazie, Dumnezeu, El care este viața, ne aduce aminte că Duhul nostru trece pe aici. Dumnezeu să fie binecuvântat în veci. Mama, ce cuvinte să mai spun? Ați auzit în limba engleză, în românește pot să vă spun că a fost o mamă iubitoare care ne-a iubit pe toți, care dacă ar fi putut și ar fi dat și inima din ea pentru fiecare, a fost o femeie veselă la viața ei, încurajatoare pentru fiecare dintre noi. Dacă aveam o problemă, mereu ne încuraja, ne rugăm Domnului, postim și Domnul ne ajută slăbit să fie Domnul. A iubit biserica, a iubit pe Domnul. Asta este cea mai importantă lucrare din viața ei. Și noi, acum pentru ea, nu mai este nicio valoare când noi suntem aici. Ea s-a dus în locul care l-a pregătit Dumnezeu, slăbit să fie numele Domnului. Și aici, la un cuvânt din Sfintele Scripturi, care Domnul Isus Hristos ne l-a dat și nouă, ca să luăm seama și să nu fim ca acei oameni care nu au nădejde. Pentru că, iată că fiecare om, într-o zi, mai devreme sau mai târziu, trebuie să spunem la revedere. Și unde ne întâlnim? Este un loc sus în cer, cum s-a cântat cântarea, în Noul Ierusalim, cu străzi de aur, ca strică la străvezie. Și Doamne ajută! Ca toți care suntem aici să putem ajunge acolo. Și ca să ajungem acolo, avem o cale pe care ne-a trasat-o Domnul Isus să mergem pe ea. Și Domnul să ne ajute. Spune aici Sfântul Apostol Pavel, 2 Corinteni, capitolul 5. Știm în adevăr că dacă se desface casa pământească a corpului nostru trupesc, avem o clădire în ce? De la Dumnezeu. O casă care nu este făcută de mână. Și este veșnică, slăbit să fie Domnul. Ea acum așteaptă ziua și clipa când va fi îmbrăcată cu acea casă minunată pe care și noi o așteptăm. Trăim în lumea aceasta și a avut necazuri, a avut durere, a avut probleme. Nu s-a prea băitat. Le-a ținut în sufletul ei. Și n-a vrut să arate. Cu o doare, mai spuneam câteodată, mă doare capul. E adevărat, cu toți câteodată ne doare cap. Dar sunt convins că mai mult decât ea ne-a supărat pe noi, noi am supărat-o pe ea. Și zic că în locul acesta Dumnezeu să ne ierte, iubiți la și surori și dragă familie. Să ne rugăm Domnului, așa cum ea s-a rugat când putea, să chemăm pe Domnul în viața noastră, așa cum ea l-a chemat în viața ei când putea. Pentru că în ultima clipă a vieții, eu am stat lângă ea și mi-a spus, mă duc acasă. Ce putem să spun? N-am avut cuvânt, dar știam că ea pleacă. Pentru că Domnul mi-a arătat personal. Și am avut și lucrurile din partea Domnului. Și Domnul m-a întărit și am, am, am vrut să o încurajez în câteva cuvinte. Mamă, va fi bine slăbit să fie Domnul. Domnul Isus Hristos, prin Sfintele Scripturi, dacă le citim, avem aici toată viața. El este viața, învierea și viața. Domnul Isus Hristos, în Biblie, Sfânta Scriptură, ni se revelează Domnul Isus viața. 
Pentru că noi asta dorim, să avem viață, să nu mai murim. Și Domnul Iisus ne spune, atenție, nu mai mori. Cine crede în mine nu va muri niciodată. Slăvit să fie Domnul. E o mare bucurie care ne așteaptă, iubiți frate și surori, pe fiecare care crede. Amen. Și Domnul Iisus să ne ajute să credem că El este Fiul lui Dumnezeu, este viața veșnică și El ne-a dat nouă această viață. Slăvit să fie Domnul. Pentru că atât de mult a iubit Dumnezeu lumea, spunea uh, Evanghelistul Ioan, robul lui Dumnezeu, pentru că a dat pe singurul zi fiu, pentru că orice cine crede în El să nu moară, ci să aibă viața veșnică. Dumnezeu să ne binecuvânteze, iubiți frate și Timpul este foarte scurt, se duce repede și aș dori să mulțumesc fraților care au venit din partea bisericii de la Betesda, pe care mama mereu aștepta cu dor. Când venea ziua, mă întreba, haide, mergem! Se îmbrăca și mă aștepta să mă duc la mașină, să o iau și să mergem la adunare. I-a plăcut mult să cânte lui Dumnezeu. Și avem o cântare aici, care spune neprecănită dragoste în întâi, o cântare care tare mult a iubit-o ea. Și a spus că noi să o cântăm. Și dacă suntem în locul acesta, Dumnezeu să ne ajute să cântăm cântarea aceasta spre slava și lauda numelui celui mai minunat care este veșnic, Domnul Isus Hristos, a Lui să fie slava în veci. Amin. Neprigănită dragoste de întâi. Neprigănită dragoste de întâi, eu nu pot fără tine. Nu pot iubi, nu pot răbda, Nu pot cunoaște pacea ta, De nu rămâi în mine. Neprecănită dragoste din tâi, Iubirea mea de tine, M-am depărtat, m-am rătăcit, Din clipa când te-am părăsit, De azi m-am întorc la tine. De m-am depărtat, m-am rătăcit, Din clipa când te-am părăsit, De azi m-am întorc la tine. Neprigănită dragoste din tâi, Ce dor de tine mă leagă. Te chem cu plânsul meu amat, Mai vin o iară cu Sfântul Sfânt, Cuprindem viața-ntreagă. Te chem cu plânsul meu amar, Mai vin o iară cu Sfântul Sfânt, Cuprinde-n viața-n pleagă. Neplicănită dragoste din tâi, Eu nu găsesc în mine. Putere să pot suferi, Ele tare să pot dărui, Nimic sunt fără tine. Putere să pot suferi, Ele tare să pot dărui, Neprigănită dragoste din tâi, Cu lacrimi de căință, Un întregul dur cu întregul gând, Mă plec în fața ta plângând, Mă închin cu umilință. Cu întregul dor, cu întregul gând, Mă plec în fața la plângând, Mă închin cu umilință. Slăbiți să fie Domnul Iisus! Viața nu se...
se încheie aici, ea merge mai departe, pentru că Domnul Isus Hristos a spus, după cum Tatăl are viața, tot așa a dat și Fiului să aibă viață în El însuși. Și să o dea cui vrea. Acestea sunt cuvintele Domnului Isus Hristos. Și cui a dat în viață? Lumii întregi. Și în această lume, iubiți frate și surori, ne-am cuprins și noi, s-a cuprins și mama, și se cuprinde orice cine care astăzi, nu mâine, că nu știm când este plecarea noastră de pe Pământul acesta. Astăzi, spune Domnul, dacă auziți glasul Lui, să nu ne împietrim inima, ci să venim la Domnul Isus, viața noastră, și ne vom întâlni cu El în veșnicie, și vom trăi cu El forever. Domnul Isus să ne ajute să vă binecuvânteze Dumnezeu și să vă dea sănătate, bucurie și pace tuturor. A Lui să fie slava cinstea și mărirea de acum și în vecii vecilor. Amin. Thank you very much. And, you know, on that, on that same note, uh, I know that another one of her grandsons would like to give a tribute. And, uh, you know, and I, just once again, I would thank the entire family for the level of care and love that they gave to Virginia. I've watched Victor work who knows how many hours and say, oh, well, I can't go home yet. I'm on my way over to go see Grandma. And Claudia well, too. And I've seen uh, I've seen her daughter, Lisa, work for months without a day off. And that's a 24-7 job. And I've seen Sam and Rosie over there too. I mean Adrian. I mean, he was major support. He was major support for the whole system. Everyone worked together as a family. And, you know, when we're 90, we should pray that we have a family that takes care of us like this family takes care of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And so, Victor, you have some things you want to share. <clears throat> Well, for being here and uh, showing respect for my grandma. She was uh, a sweet woman. Uh, learned a lot from her. Uh, main main thing that we've learned from her always was uh, was was about God. You know, through it all, she uh, she just told us, you know, uh, the main important thing is always that you keep your faith and uh, you go back to your roots, and that's that's how you know who you are. Right? You know, when when the when, when tough gets going and stuff and and uh, you start peeling back the, the layers, you kind of get to know someone and you, and you get to see them. And Grandma was just as human as, as, as any one of us, you know, she would look in the mirror, she, she knew her time was coming, but she wasn't afraid. And uh, we were honored to uh, take care of her, and uh, it was a blessing. Uh, a lot of my days were kind of stressful and hard, and, you know, 12 hour days plus, and I would go there, and, and uh, she would just, just make me smile. You know, that big, beautiful smile I'll never forget, <clears throat> and a light on her face. And uh, some of the days were hard for her, too, but um, I noticed she would spend time in the Word, and that's what got her through. In the Word, and like, just sing, and, and, and uh, I would go shopping, and then I'd come back, and she would just be big beam on her face. And, uh, and I'm so grateful that many, many years ago, I, I want to speak of Anak as well, as my sister was spoken uh, of Anak. But the beautiful thing is, this is a different type of knock. This is the knock that comes to all of us from Jesus Christ. I would like to uh, share this uh, scripture with you guys. <clears throat> um, this is Jesus speaking. Let's see here. We've got uh, Revelation 3. We're going to read on uh, 20 and 4. It says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If, it, if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come and eat with that person, and, and they will eat with me. Trust me. Ground on you. <laughs> She was stressful. Um, and she she knew that that her time was coming in, and she had some 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 hard time in her lives, uh, in her life in, in Romania when when uh, different things happened, you know, child chest area, uh, era and all that stuff. This woman would get on her knees and she would pray, and this is what got her through. It says to the one uh, who is victorious, I will give 
that now listen, the one that who is victorious. What does that mean? That means a constant walk with Jesus Christ. That means um, you can believe, but then if, if you don't walk this life, it, it becomes me. It, it's not meaningless, but it's just you have no show for 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 your belief. Grandma had show for her belief. Why? Because every day. She would get up and she would praise God. This gave another day of bread, another day of life. Yeah. This is the woman that had grit. Uh, she would pray for this family. She believed in this family. She would give everything, uh, no matter the cost. And um, so, so the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. <clears throat> um, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne, wherever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. Uh, today she sits at her place at the table with God, yes. and that's because of her actions. Uh, look around us, this, who, who are we today, and what are we today, and why are we here? It's because of her actions. One day, uh, she had this beautiful daughter, Guizha, which was the size of my baby girl today. I hold, I, I hold her in my hands. One, uh, she had Guizha in her hands, <clears throat> and she blessed this little child, and she asked for a blessing on this child, and then we came along. It's because of her actions. If, if, if it not had been for her actions, we wouldn't be here. And, and, and this is the importance of, 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 of us today. Where, where are we? Where are our actions? What are we doing for the next legacy? One day I'm going to be in a cafe like that. Who's going to be around me? Who's going to talk about me? Is, you know, my daughter going to uh, you know, uh, say this was a great man of faith. This is the man that, that, that lived Christ. This is the man that taught me Christ. I, I am who I am today because of this man. You know, this is the woman that carried on that legacy, and, and she had such high hopes for all of us all the time. Uh, um, in her old age, I would come home and, and I would see her on her knees and crying and praying, and just uh, you know, and I come in and, and I just man, it just changed. Like you know, I have all these words of, the, of my world and stuff, and it just it got me back on track. It was just like man, Grandma's got it. Like there it is. You know, and uh, she was just she was she was a sweet woman. <clears throat> so uh, I like to share some of the scriptures here, real quick. I know we don't have too much time. <clears throat> uh, this one is uh, John fourteen one through three. It says, "Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Uh, also, uh, believe in me. Also, this is Jesus speaking. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so." What I have not told you, and I'm, uh, I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. And so because of her actions and her uh, uh, opening up the door to Jesus Christ and believing in Jesus Christ, um, we are here too of faith, you know, and, uh, and we have hope. And we know that she is in an amazing place. <clears throat> Uh, also, John 11, 25-26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, uh, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Um, and then one more, I'd like to uh, dedicate this one to Grandma. This one was beautiful. It says here, 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4. It says here, uh, Okay, it says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept my faith. Now there is now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Amen. This was her desire. You know, she spoke about Jesus Christ, um, and uh, and you know she lived it. And and, and I I can tell those who just talk and no walk, but this is a woman that really walked, and uh, her life proved it, her life proved it, and let me tell you, when you really walk with Christ, uh, your life will prove it, and not only will you prove it, but um, you actually make change for people, believe it or not, you may not think so, but spiritually something happens there, because why, you carry, uh, you possess a great power in you, you carry um, uh, an encouragement, a joy, uh, you carry life within you, you understand, Jesus made you, God made you, you're here for a purpose, and if you are in His purpose, in His will, there is now, there is now a plan for you. It's not just wake up and, and chase that money, or wake up and chase your desires to have a nice home, or whatever. It's wake up and say, Jesus, what do you want me to do with this mouth, with these, with these, with these hands, with these feet? It's where you walk, you carry the, the Spirit of God. That's why wherever Jesus walked, there was actually 
change happening wherever he walked. Right. Well, wherever the Pharisees walked, they knew the Bible, but they there there was no there was no result. And 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 I'm telling you, when I walk in the room and see this beautiful smile on this lady, it just it just it, it changed me. And when she would pray, and the Holy Spirit would come on her, and man, it was just the power of God it was in that little apartment, and I was just praising God with her. And uh, what's amazing is we're going to sit at the same table one day. We're going to share these memories. Yes. <laughs> and it's that's a beautiful thing. Let's see if I have anything else uh, to say. I kind of mustered up a lot together here. But uh, <clears throat> this is the most beautiful and strongest, most faithful woman I've ever known. I'm telling you, any 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 uh, problems you would have, she'd say, what's going on? You know, sit here. You know, she'd just make time for you. And, uh, and like Mitch just said, we're going to pray for that. You know, we're going to fast for that. And uh, it's just amazing. It's Amen. just amazing. Amen. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, today she sits with the King of Kings. And Grandma, we love you. We thank you so much for the uh, legacy you've left here. Uh, we will be <laughs> holding you in our hearts one day. Uh, we will uh, we will see you in heaven. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, at this moment, we've got a, uh, a video tribute uh, that's going to be shared. Are we ready to roll that?
cer care grea, te vrea cu gelozie. Să birui doar așa-i putea să-i cânt-o venicie. Așa e calea către cer, e o luptă înverjunată. Nu mai țu minte mici. Nu mai țu, dacă o văd, dar e din carte. Nu mai cam uita, nu mai cânt. Ia uite de cărți aici. Dar ce crezi că mai țin minte? Și nici nu văd că n-am luat o echelare. Mai țin cu asta, dar să fie. O păstorul meu iubit, o Iisuse, eu la tine am venit, tu iertă-mă, de la tine niciodată, Doamne, nu voi mai pleca, Deci primește-mă la tine acum, De la tine niciodată, Doamne, nu voi mai pleca, deci primește-mă la tine acum. Tu m-ai scăpat de la moarte, o Doamne, și ți-ai arătat mine dragostă, de aceea niciodată nu uita ce mi-ai. Ceea ce vrea Dumnezeu să ne spună și ceea ce Dumnezeu ne cere, ar trebui să-mi primim. Căvânt Dumnezeu în Psalmul 62, cu versetul 11 și 12, spune Odată a vorbit Dumnezeu și de două ori am auzit că puterea este în Dumnezeu. 
A ta, Doamne, este bunătatea, căci Tu răspătești fiecarea după faptele Lui. Toți în alergarea noastră așteptăm o răsplată și avem impresia că atunci când facem ceva, vom fi bine primiți. Cuvântul lui Dumnezeu ne avertizează. Dumnezeu vorbește odată și omul Dumnezeu nu de două ori. Și ce spune cu Dumnezeu în Apocalipsa 3 cu versetul 20 pentru fiecare dintre noi, când vorbește Dumnezeu odată și o trebuie să de două ori, iată, el stau la ușă și bat. Dacă aude cineva glasul meu și deschide ușa, voi intra la el, voi cina pe el și el cu mine. Îți vorbește Dumnezeu și vorbește Dumnezeu. Să nu crezi că oricum ajunge acolo. În Apocalipsa, capitolul 22, cu versetul 11, Cuvântul Domnului spune că nimic închinat și spurcat nu va intra în Împărăția Lui Dumnezeu. Îmi vorbește Dumnezeu în seara aceasta, în ziua aceasta, să-mi pună rânduială viața cu El. Pentru că fiecare dintre noi vrem o răsplată. Pentru că așa am citit în Psalmul 62, cu versetul 12, Tu răsplătești fiecare după fapta Lui. Noi, în alegarea noastră, vrem răsplată. Însă aș vrea să înțelegi că ascultarea are o răsplată. Nu poți să primești o răsplată din mâna lui Dumnezeu dacă nu asculti Dumnezeu. Aduți aminte de Noe, când Dumnezeu se prezintă la Noe și în Geneza 7, cu versetul 14, spune Noe, fă-ți o copucabie din gofer. Cât e absurd lucru ce e Dumnezeu. O lucrare normală. Însă ascultarea lui Noe a fost răspătită, a avut viață. Se prezintă Dumnezeu la Avram în Geneza 15 cu versetul 1 și îi spunea Avrame, nu te teme, eu sunt răsplata ta cea foarte mare. Ascultarea lui Avram este răsplătită. Avram a ajuns să fie tatăl motor neamor, să fie cel din tip atriar și să fie omul care a pus temelia umblării cu Dumnezeu. Deci iată că ascultările noastre sunt răspătite. Nu ne putem alerga oricum pe calea spre mântuire. Vine Cuvântul Dumnezeu prin Azaria, un om al Dumnezeu pe vremea lui Asa, în 2 Cronici, capitolul 15, cu versetul 2 și spune Ascultă Asa, ascultă împărate. Și tot Iuda și Beniamin Domnul este cu voi că sunteți cu el. Dacă îl căutați, îl veți găsi. Ascultarea își dă roade în viețile noastre. Aduceți-vă aminte un moment dat când uh, una din femeile prorocilor rămâne văduva, avea doi fii, avea o datorie mare spre Dumnezeu, în doi împărați și la un moment dat se duce la omul lui Dumnezeu la Elisei și Elisei îi spune un lucru absurd. Un lucru anormal. O întreabă ce ai acasă? Am puțin un telefon. Du-te în casă, adună bațe multe, nu puține, închide ușa după tine și umplele. Dacă Dumnezeu va spune lucrul acesta astăzi, l-ați ascultat? Frații mei, noi nu putem fi și pe calea pierzării și pe calea mântuirii. Și femeia aceasta îl ascultă pe omul Dumnezeu își salvează fiii și viața lui. E de ce înseamnă ascultarea? Asta e răsplata ascultării. Ce îți spune Dumnezeu să faci? Dacă Dumnezeu a spus să umbli în sfințenie, dacă Dumnezeu a spus să n-ai nimic cu lumea, dacă Dumnezeu ți-a spus să ieși acolo din păcat, ieși odată! Fratele meu, cuvântul e pentru toți. Pe deapsa e pentru cel ce ne ascultă. Și bine, cuvântarea e pentru cel ce ascultă. Alege ce vrei să faci. Nu poți merge oricum știopătând pe calea neprihănirii. Nu poți merge cu mâinile oposite să nu faci nicio bine și să ajungi în Împărăția Lui Dumnezeu. Nu poți fi un egoist și un om care nu te interesează de aproapele tău. Și să treci cu lădejea că te așteaptă Împărăția. Frații, o să nu ieși eu. Cuvântul Lui Dumnezeu spune în Psalmul 62 cu versetul 12. A ta, Doamne, este și bunătatea. Rugăciunea noastră au răsplătire. 
Dumnezeu ne ascultă în bunătatea Lui. Să nu credeți că avem vreunul merite ca să fim ascultați de Dumnezeu, ca Dumnezeu să se coboare la noi și pentru că noi avem merite. Cuvântul Dumnezeu în Matei, capitolul 6, cu versetul 6, ne spune despre această roadă, această răsplată ascultă a rugăciunii. Spune, ci tu când te rogi, intră în odăița ta, în cuie ușa și roagă-te Tatălui tău care este în ascuns și Tatăl tău care, este, care te vede în ascuns îți va răsplăti. Suntem într-o lume atât de agitată. Ne rugăm cu indiferența lui Dumnezeu. Nu-i dăm cinstea ca Dumnezeu. Nu îi pierdem timpul la locul de muncă să ne rugăm pentru că vrem să facem bani. Dar așa câteodată stând sau indiferent, ne mai amintim de Dumnezeu și ne rugăm. Ar vrea să înțelegi că atunci ai o răstată a rugăciunii când este așa ascultat. Și știi ce spune Dumnezeu în Ioan 15 cu 7? Dacă rămâneți în mine și dacă rămâne în voi cuvintele mele, cereți orice veți vrea și vi se va da. Ai o răsplată. Dacă îl asculți, ai o răsplată și după ce îl asculți, începi să te rogi la Dumnezeu, să rămâi în El și El în tine și să văd roadele. Aș vrea să înțelegi că nevoia noastră de Dumnezeu este o nevoie care nu este condiționată nici de bogăție, nici de sărăcie, nici de tinerețe, nici de bătrânețe. Toți avem nevoie de Dumnezeu. Aduce aminte că, la un moment dat, Moise iese cu poporul, omului Dumnezeu, ales de Dumnezeu, pus în, în, în fruntea lor, se conducă și sora lui cu fratele lui cu Aron au început să vorbească de rău și Maria se umple de letră. Iată răsplata rugăciunii. Vine Moise înainte de Dumnezeu și spune în numele capitolul 12 cu versetul 13 Dumnezeu a zis către Dumnezeu Doamne, vindecă-o! Și răsplata vine. Maria se vindecă de lepră. De câte ori te rog la Dumnezeu și te întrebi ce nu m-a spus, Doamne? <coughs> Puneți-l în viață viața. Ascultă de Dumnezeu. Vea că răsplata. Și apoi vine la altare cu problemele tale. Omul lui Dumnezeu, Ilie, ajunge în casa văduvei unde a trimit Dumnezeu și Dumnezeu își face lucrarea acolo, înmulțește făina și unde lemnul, însă se întâmplă un lucru, moare copilul. Și cuvântul Dumnezeu în 1 Împărații, capitolul 17, cu versetul 21 și 22, ne arată cuvântul Domnului ce înseamnă să-ți fie răsplătită rugăciunea. Ce înseamnă ca Dumnezeu care slujești să te asculte. Spune cuvântul Domnului, Doamne Dumnezeule, te rog, fă să se întoarcă sufletul copilului în el. Domnul a ascultat la surul și sufletul copilului s-a întors la el și a înviat. Uite că rugăciunea are o răsplată dacă ascunde Dumnezeu. Ar vrea ca Dumnezeu să vă dea răsplată fiecare dintre dumneavoastră, însă aș vrea să ne punem viețile în îndreală cu Dumnezeu toți. Haideți să ne dăm silințele, să umblăm pe calea neclionirii așa cum vrea Dumnezeu, nu cum e place nouă. Ar vrea să mă apropii de încheiere cu un cuvânt care toți îl așteptăm. Umblarea cu Dumnezeu are o răsplată. Nu numai ascultarea, nu numai rugăciunea. Umblarea noastră în fiecare zi cu Dumnezeu. Cuvântul Dumnezeu în Psalmul 62 cu versetul 12, ultima parte și spune Tu răspătești fiecarea după faptele Lui. E foarte greu să cântărim viața noastră și vreunul din noi să poată să spună Eu merit să intru în Împărăția lui Dumnezeu. Cuvântul lui Dumnezeu în Isaia, în capitolul 46, vorbește despre cei ce ascultă de Dumnezeu, cei ce sunt din poporul lui Dumnezeu, cu versetul 3 și 4 spune, Ascultă-mă casa lui Iacob și toată rămășița casei lui Israel. Nu-i vorba de cei botezați, nu-i vorba de cei tăiați împrejur, e vorba de cei 
care fac voia lui Dumnezeu. Amin. La acela ne vorbește Bunul Domnului și spune Voi pe care v-am luat în spinarea de la obărșia voastră, pe care v-am purtat pe umăr de la nașterea voastră, până la bătrâneața voastră, eu voi fi același, până la căruteața voastră, vă voi sprijini, v-am purtat și tu nu vreau să vă mai port, să vă sprijin și să vă mântuiesc. Iată, în alergarea noastră, în umblarea noastră cu Dumnezeu, Dumnezeu îmi cere să umblu pe, să intru pe poarta cea strântă, pe calea cea îngustă. Acum e în prezent Dumnezeu. Nu în lumea. Atâtea lucruri din lume le aducem în casele noastre și le așezăm în inima noastră ca și cum ar stăpâni peste noi. Nici că ne mai pasă de cuvântul Dumnezeu. Avem impresia că suntem aleși pentru totdeauna să moșenim de și cia. Fratele meu, dacă trăiești de prihănirea, ești a doi. Dacă nu, de ce am văzut? Nu eu ți-o spun, mi-o spune cuvântul Dumnezeu. Eu nu pot să fiu părtinitor în ziua de astăzi ca să îți spun altfel mesajul lui Dumnezeu. Dumnezeu vrea sfințire în viața în noastră. Dumnezeu vrea despărțire de lumea aceasta și o umblare, așa cum îi place lui, în nefrigănirea lui. Pentru că vine Apostolul Petru, la un moment dat, în Matei, capitolul 19, cu versetul 27, și spune, atunci Petru la cuvântul și a zis, Doamne, ne-am lăsat totul și te-am urmat. Ce răsplată vom avea? De multe ori renunțăm la lucruri și ne punem întrebarea de ce mai sunt necazuri, de ce mai sunt probleme în viața noastră. Aș vrea să înțelegi că Hristos, când ne-a chemat la mântuire, ne-a spus un lucru. Veți fi urâți de toți din pricina numărului meu. Că lumea te iubește, ești ca și ea. Când lumea te dă la o parte, înseamnă că ești deosebit. Puneți întrebarea cum ești în alergarea ta. Pentru că Apostolul Pavel spune că căcați pe urmele mele, pentru că ca și eu pe urmele lui Hristos. Și știți ce se întâmplă Apostolului Pavel? Noi foarte mult ne uităm spre binecuvântările firești care izbesc ochii. Noi nu ne uităm ca și noi spre răsplata veșnică. Și vine cu Dumnezeu și spune despre Pavel, despre cel cu care vrem să moștenim împărăția în 2 Corinteni, capitolul 11, versetul uh, 20. Dacă vă robește cineva, dacă vă mănâncă cineva, dacă pune cineva în mâna pe voi, dacă vă privește cineva de sus, dacă vă bate cineva peste obraz, suferiți! Vă sunteți aparte! Vă sunteți aleși de Dumnezeu! Vreți o răsplată în umbrarea voastră cu Dumnezeu! Nu fiți ca lumea și să credeți că că vi pe Dumnezeu. Părții mei, Apostolul Pavel, după ce ajunge la sfârșitul alergării lui, vorbește lui Timotei, în 2 Timotei, capitolul 4, versetul 7 și 8 și spune M-am luptat luptă cea bună, mi-am istorit alergarea și am păzit credința. De acum mă așteaptă cu luna neprihănirii pe care mi-o va da în ziua aceea Domnul, judecătorul cel drept și nu numai mie, ci tuturor celor ce vor fi iubit venirea Lui. Aduce aminte că Domnul Iisus Hristos mi-a făcut o făgăduință în lume, veți avea în cazuri. Dar îndrăzniți, eu am venit în lumea. Necazul este o încercare care vine peste tine ca să te apropie mai mult de Dumnezeu. Totdeauna oamenii lui Dumnezeu în strâmb toreri, Totdeauna oamenii Dumnezeu îmbat jocuri sau apropiat de Dumnezeu. Când cei din jur îi disprețiau, cu atât mai mult ei se apropiau de Dumnezeu. Fă-ți o în ziua de astăzi și vezi cum stai în alergarea ta. Aș vrea să închei cu un cuvânt care spune uh, Domnul Iisus Hristos în Apocalipsa 22 cu versetul 12. Prin Ioan, când transmite mesajul, încheierii lucrării noastre pe pământ spune, iată, eu vin curând și răsplata mea este cu mine ca să dau fiecăruia după faptele lui. Aș dori în ziua aceea când ne va chema Dumnezeu să auzim glasul lui Dino binecuvântat Tatălui meu. Dar până atunci trebuie ca să ne luptăm lupta cea bună pe vinței trebuie să umblăm pe calea neprigănirii și să ne hotărâm pentru totdeauna 
să rămânem copiii Lui. Dumnezeu să vă binecuvinteze. Amin. Doamne Dumnezeu nostru, îți mulțumim din toată inima pentru bunica noastră, Virginia Alda, care este cu tine. Doamne, știm că este în mâna ta, știm că toate lacrimele ei nu mai este, durerile nu mai există. Ea este plină de harul și de pacea ta, acum, Doamne, când pe când ce cu tine. Și, Doamne, așa îți mulțumim că este în locașul minunat cu tine, Doamne. Te rog, Iisuse, să ne atingi inimile noastre pentru cei noi care am rămas aici, mai ales familia ei, Doamne. Tu să ne aduci vindecare, să ne aduci uh, izbăbire, putere, Doamne. Ajută-ne, Doamne, ca să trăim viața cum trebuie, ca să te întâlnim față în față și să nu ne fie rușine și să nu ne fie frică, pentru că știm că suntem mai tăi și știm vocea ta și așa știm că suntem uh, curățiți și spălați în sângele tău, fără, fără nicio vină, pentru că tu ne-ai luat toate vinele deasupra ta. Iisuse Sfânt și Minunat, îți mulțumim pentru această uh, mormântare, Doamne, unde vrem să onorăm pe Virginia și viața ei și cine a fost. Doamne, ajută-ne să nu uităm niciodată în viața noastră ce a pus ea în noi, de la Tine. Și, Doamne, ajută-ne ca să, să fim cum trebuie să fim, ca să ne întâlnim cu Tine, Doamne. Și viața asta nu se merită, Doamne, fără Tine. Tu ești răsplata noastră, Tu ești ajutorul meu, Tu ești iubitul nostru. Și îți mulțumesc pentru tot ce a făcut bunica noastră pentru noi, Doamne. Îți mulțumim că a fost o femeie care te-a iubit și care a iubit familia lui. Îți mulțumim, Doamne, că Tu ne-ai dat o familie, ne-ai dat o familie, mulți nu au familii, dar, Doamne, îți mulțumim că avem oameni în viața noastră care, ne ții, care le pasă de noi și ne iubește, Doamne. Amin. 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 Pray. Yes, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come praise you. And Lord, as we conclude this portion of the service of celebration of Virginia's life, I feel that she would like to have this blessing spoken over her family, her friends, and her loved ones. It's found written in the Bible and said, you shall speak this over the people so the presence of the Lord just settle upon them. And I'm going to pray this twice, once in the tongue, Jesus would have spoken and in English. So ye varekaka adanai, ve yish miracha, ye er adanai panav elacha vechunika, ye sa adanai panav elacha, ve yasen lacha shalom. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Shine his face upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift his countenance upon you. And give you shalom, being restored to wholeness. And may the peace of Jesus Christ fall upon you. May he send the Comforter to comfort those who mourn. And raise their hearts. And Lord, in this time of mourning, and there is grief. There is also a joy. And I ask you, Lord, that you would come. And then where it is written that you shall bind up the heart of the brokenhearted, that word bind means to heal. It means to bind a healing upon the broken heart. So I ask you, Lord, that you would come and let your peace that passes all understanding come and bind a healing upon every broken heart and let your love flow over person in this place. And I ask for your blessing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you all for coming again. It was a blessing to have you. Thank the family again for all the good care to Grandma. Uh, I just want to bless the Lord and continue to pray for one another. We're all in this together on this journey and we need each other's help. We need each other, each other's encouragement and prayer. Amen. Um, 
We're going to go um, straight to the funeral, uh, the cemetery. It's on the back pamphlet of your um, brochure. I think it's Lincoln Memorial Cemetery. It's at 3 o'clock there, so we want to save some daylight. And so we'll see everyone there that's coming there. And God bless everyone. Information. So you can go to the cemetery and then meet us there in the parking lot. Okay. <laughs>
subject, so we'll have you push. Actually, I'll push because you usually go up deep first. Mm -hmm. camera. <laughs>
It's uneven, even though we put some boards down, it's still. Who are going to be the pole bearers? Well, John, and then all the guys with the black suits. Oh, okay. Yeah, all, okay. all the pole bearers. Yeah, 
a zis că bine, dorul mai e zbutat, dar ei, ce ne mai e? Ei era servicul lor aici. Le-am dat o jumătate de oră acolo, le-am dat de o jumătate de oră și n-am mai vrut. Okay, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, the the pastor that was supposed to do this service, uh, I guess, didn't make it. First of all, he was sick and in the hospital, and then the other pastor that was supposed to uh, replace him, the one that spoke at the funeral, the older gentleman was supposed to come, but he didn't make it. So sorry. Mm -hmm. So Tim uh, will will give a short message. I just want to invite anyone right now that wants to share anything else about uh, our grandmother or Virginia that wants to share anything at all. It could be, it doesn't have to be family, it could be a friend. So this would be a time you can raise your hand if you want to say something and come up. <laughs> Does anyone have anything to say? Do you want to say something, mom? I don't know if she can hear me. <laughs> okay, she's going to say something. <laughs> Oh, she's gone. But also, people know Jesus. You'll know what I'm talking about. This is something that happened to me when my father passed away. I was in the room with him, and I raised a white family with him. I had a vision of heaven. It was the most beautiful place. I saw the wall around the door, and there was a, a door in the wall that we did. And this uh, man came out, and he had, maybe some of you guys would remember the old hat, you know, with the, with the wide brims. He had a hat like that, and it was pulled down where you couldn't see his knees. But he came out, and beside the wall was, uh, beside the door, uh, there was a, an old robot, was wool. And there was a, a three feet tree beside it, and then there was a river, and it was black, black river. And um, the man came out and he took that hose and put it into the water. And then um, he got in and he started rowing across. Well, I heard this great big voice that said, Stop, you'll get there too soon. So he turned sideways in the river and just sat there, just sat there and waited. And then there was, uh, I saw this angel come down and he came down and he walked up beside my father's bed and turned around and waited. I had to leave to go get my little brother. And when I came back, daddy was gone. So was the angel. The angel had come to take him to Jesus. When my mother died, I was in the room with uh, uh, some of the other family. I was standing there and I had my hand on her head. And I saw a hurting, a hurting with his push come down. He came on a slant and he walked up to the side of my mother's bed. And then he turned and he waited. And when my mother was gone, <laughs> the angel took her away to her to heaven. And that's what happened to grandmother. When she died, there was an angel there standing beside her and he took her to Jesus. So I just want to encourage those of you who know the Lord is your own Savior. Be encouraged. Because grandmother is in the most wonderful place that you could ever imagine. I mean, I've been there. I've seen it. I can. T I'll tell you, there are no words to describe it. And I cannot wait to go back again. I'm 82 years old, so my time will be coming one of these days. So don't mourn for me. Be glad for me, you guys, because I'll be with Jesus and I'll be with my family and my loved ones. I'll be with Anthony. I'll be with my parents and see him again. I'll be with my grandparents and different ones. And I'll see grandmother too. Mm -hmm. Now when grandmother comes back, the scripture talks about this, and I'm sure if any of you that are familiar at all with the Bible, you've read this scripture. It talks about when Jesus comes back again, 
and he brings his people with him. He comes with a with a, a big shout and um, the trump of an angel, and, and here they come. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then the ones that are alive on the earth will also rise up with Jesus, but the dead come first. And so grandmother's going to come first, and she'll be coming according to the scripture to give her glorified body. This body in this body is not the one. It's going to be brand new. It's going to be beautiful. She's not going to have any pain, no age. She's going to be young again. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. She would want you to be encouraged. I didn't know her as well as some of you. But, you know, I'm very excited about where she is. It's a joy to me to know that she's there. All of you that are my friends, I can't wait. I just want all of you to be there. I want everybody to be there. Everybody. Because I know what it's like. I've been there. You don't want to miss it. And you sure don't want to go to that other place. Thank you. Uh, is there somebody else that wants to share something at this point? Well, Virginia, Ethan, you want to come up? Okay. Yeah. Well, let me turn my mask into a chin oh, no. diaper, I guess. <laughs> um, I remember uh, coming home from school when I was living with my grandma. And, um, you know, my great grandma, she'd always be in the corner. Um, next to the drapes. It was like her designated chair over there. And, uh, you know. She'd always ask you. She, yeah. She would, uh, I remember uh, her trying to teach me how to count to 10 in Romanian. For those of you that don't know, I don't speak Romanian, which I wish I did. But you are Romanian. I am. But I wish I actually spoke it. That way I could converse with her and all that um but i really regret not um not spending as much time with her as i should have and i know right now she's in a good place no more pain and i i love that for her and i hope one day i can see her um again but uh I just want to say, you know, make sure you spend time with the people you love. Let them know that, you know. I really regret not spending as much time with her as I should have. Big time. And if I could go back and change that, I would. But Thank you. Ethan. That's my two cents. That's wonderful. Yay. Anyone else? Yes, I'd like to say. Okay, yes, please. Okay. Yeah, my name is Judith, and I live at the Crown Villa. <laughs> Where Virginia lived, and I was a good friend with Pam and John and Virginia, and I will never forget Virginia sitting across the street in the days when she was walking with her babushka, and you'll get a picture that is the photograph of her that's on the front of the your program is exactly what... Um, what, what she looked like to me. And then we would, she would, I would, Pam would tell her who I was and I lived in the, across with them. And anyway, and then she would, and I'd say, I want to know in Romanian how to say some things. So what I learned from her was mulțumes. Oh, perfect. You're doing good. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else would like to share anything? Adrian, did you have something? I know one thing Adrian wanted to say, I'm going to say it, is do not go in one of these till you are ready to meet Jesus. Do not end up in one of these caskets till you are ready to meet Jesus. That's one thing he wanted to say. Amen. And I think my mom has something to share.
It's a blessing. To, it was a blessing to have her as a grandmother, and she still is my grandmother. Always will be, and for all of us brothers as well. Um, is there anyone else that would like to say anything at all? Okay, Sylvia. <laughs> Thank you. My memory with uh, Virginia, sister in Christ, uh, since like 2000 when she. Oh, may I speak Romanian? <laughs> Whatever Maybe I'm not like. gonna make it uh, that good for you could speak English. It in whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Um, I can translate if you want. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, I mean, did you like my Sora Virginia? My memories that I had with my sister Virginia. Au început din 2000, în anul când ea a sosit în America. They started in 2000, the same year she, uh, Virginia, arrived into America. I was, uh, um, am fost buni prieteni uh, în familia mea, Filip, și cu familia lui Andronache. Uh, my family, Philip, was very good uh, friends with uh, the Andronache family, which is Virginia's family. Uh, în noaptea când a sosit, am întâmpinat-o și noi. And the night that she arrived, we also met her. And uh, a fost o, o clipă pentru ea foarte, uh, totul a fost foarte nou pentru ea și uh, era, era într-un fel și bucuroasă, dar și supărată să vedea puțin tristețea uh, despărțirii de țara ei. Um, it was an exciting time for her, but at the same time she was shocked and she was a little scared and she was missing her country. We had very excited to be here with her family. Uh, când uh, timpul a trecut, uh, ea a fost uh, puțin, uh, a trecut printr-o perioadă uh, grea, dar uh, uh, se simțea foarte bine în prezența noastră când ne adunam și făceam mese împreună. Mm-hmm. She had a lot of hard times in her life, so there were difficult moments, but she would feel so good and at ease when she was in the presence of, of friends and family, eating and talking and singing, praying together. Uh, um, Următoarele momente care mi-au fost învățând pe inimă ca să le spun. Uh, the last few moments that I have on my heart that I want to share. Sunt în, în, în ziua când eu am sosit din North Dakota, uh, Puița și Mircea au pregătit masă de ziua ei și am fost și eu invitată în, în ziua de 3 decembrie sau mm-hmm. On the 3rd of December, I was also invited to come and celebrate a pre-birthday for her. Uh, and that's the same day I came from North Dakota to visit Oregon. And uh, John and Pam prepared a wonderful meal. Uh, me seated on my chair and she was in her room on her chair. As, as, as if I'm seeing her vision. Uh, uh, f- ea era uh, cu trupul prezent aici, dar chipul el era plecat, nu era aici de total. As if her body was there, but yet her spirit was not really there. Her spirit was not, to- her body was here, but she was not totally here. 
și m-am dus în camera ei and I went into her room. Și am zis uh, uh, sora Vir- Virginia and I said dear sister spui? what do you want to tell me what can you say? Și o uh, atâta mi-a 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 spus privește pozele deci asta e familia mea. She said look at these pictures up above. This is my family. Uh, și m- m- uh, And I'm in a hurry to go meet my mother and my father. And then I asked, would you like to pray? And then together we prayed the Lord's Prayer. Then the last words, she says, I know Jesus. The last word she said, I know Jesus, I know him. I can ask for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Sylvia. That was wonderful. Bless God. Anyone else? Okay. 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 Um, I know Virginia, she used to come to church to Bethesda. I I used to go there. And uh, she used to sing all the time songs. (laughs) She used to be so happy, and um, Adrian usually would come and pick her up, or the or the Puitza would bring her, and um, was really nice to see that the family Lenita takes care of her. a little higher. Sorry. Was, was really nice to see that uh, the family is taking care of her, and the um, grand, you know the who's it, your nephews. Nepotism. Yeah, nephews. The nephews, you know, they come, they come with her sometimes, and they wait for her, they bring her, they take her, and I used to think, what a nice family, you know, they come and take her, they take her, and so on, they love her. <laughs> so I was so glad, you know, to know Virginia, and uh, she was a good um, sister in the Lord, and I feel sorry that I didn't spend time to, more with her and visit her to sing, but now she's in heaven, and now she's singing that. When I used to be little in the school, you know, uh, my friends used to bribe about something, this or that. And I used to say, how many do you have in heaven? (laughs) And I used to bribe, I have seven or eight or whatever. And they didn't know much. I would say, I have so many in heaven. So I'm just saying that we need to pray that our family would get to heaven. And we are glad that Virginia went to heaven and she is in heaven with the Lord. And uh, may the Lord uh, comfort your hearts. One day we'll be together. Okay, God bless you. Lord. God bless you. Well, thank you everyone for sharing. There's one more chance if anybody else wants to go. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Okay. All right. Well, I want to, in your pamphlets, you were given a, a bookmark. You could keep that. Uh, This is a gift from Virginia Elder and her family. I want to read that. It says, Fill not your heart with pain and sorrow, but remember me in every tomorrow. Remember the joy, the laughter, the smiles. I'm only gone just to rest a little while. Although my leaving causes pain and grief, my going has seized my hurt and given me relief. So dry your eyes and remember me, not as I am now, but as I used to be because I will remember you all and look on you with a smile. Understand in your heart, I'm only gone just to rest a little while. As long as I have the love of each of you, I can live my life in the hearts of all of you. Amen. So praise the Lord. I just want to sing the Near My God to Thee song. Some of you guys got copies. Let's, you guys can help me sing, please. (laughs) Okay. Nearer my God to Thee, nearer to Thee, and though it be a cross that raised me, still all my songs shall be nearer my God.
That's our song. I'm going to invite Tim to come and give us a message, a short message. Amen. Pastor Tim, sorry. Okay. It's not really important the title, it's just what you do. Uh, the chin diaper, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, on behalf of the family of Virginia Alda, I wish to thank each and every one of you for being here today. And even though today is a difficult day, the scriptures have made promise. And this promise, I read from Psalms 46, so 1 and 3. In all things, God's made a promise to us. And it, it's written, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in troubles. And therefore we will not fear, even though the earth would be removed and the mountains be carried into the middle of the sea, and even though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling of, there is a river, the streams of God shall make us glad. Praise God. The Bible also says one of my favorite scriptures, and I this one, is one that when I have troubles, I go here. I'm going to go to Romans chapter 8, where it's written, Who shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ? Shall trouble, distress, persecution, famine, even nakedness of peril or war? But as it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But no, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And this is our assurance. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, or powers, or things present, or things to come, or anything of height of depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord she lived every single time I ever saw her she was praying at least one point in time she was preaching to me and I could only hear and understand part of it but I could always understand when she would say Jesus loves you she said it all the time I could understand her I couldn't sit down and really have a conversation with her but that I could always understand. And it's universal. And nothing can separate her from the love of Jesus Christ or anyone else. Yes. So Father in heaven, we gather to get here today. And we just remember the precious life of Virginia. We also gather to say goodbye one last time. 
and celebrate the life that she enjoyed here on earth and thank you for each and every precious moment and every memory that we have had with her. Her life has touched us in so many different ways and we pray that your peace and presence will be upon us during that time and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we gather here and we remember the dear and precious life of Virginia Alda. And I know that many of you are dealing with mixed emotions and on the one hand there's emotions of great sadness but sadness is not for Virginia because she's in a far better place. Thank you. Sadness is for us because we've lost a dear one. But on the other hand there's a great joy knowing that because of the relationship that Virginia had with the Lord Jesus Christ that she has already been in his presence. She's already there. Amen. And it is my firm belief, and I am persuaded she is looking on us now, and she's praying for us. Amen. <laughs> it's written. There's a crowd of witnesses in heaven, and they stand and they pray for us. Thank you, Jesus. And she's looking down, and she has the ability now to see who needs the prayer the most. <laughs> she sees everything. Yes. There's a great joy knowing of a relationship because the scriptures say in 2 Corinthians, it's so we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, yes, and well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. And I think that defines what she wanted. Uh, she went to be with the Lord on her 90th birthday and I can only look at that as a birthday present yes. for her this is where she wanted to be and I know she said that all the time and for the Christian there's no greater joy than to be in the presence of the one that loves them like no one else can so today is not a day of mourning but a day of celebration it's not a day of regret but truly a day of rejoicing because today we remember the life of Virginia and we reminisce over all the special moments that we had with her as you see Virginia had a relationship that carried some wonderful promises found in John chapter 14 I just want to read that section let not your heart be troubled for you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will receive you to myself. Amen. That's what happened. And where I go, you may know. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. I really can't say anything much more than that except that what we have in our hearts is we have a grief and we have a loss and we're going to deal with that God is going to send the comforter the Holy Spirit to bring peace he's going to bind us with healing for our broken hearts but we have a hope and a joy knowing she's already in a place where she'll never be stuck in a chair again unless she wants to sit there. <laughs> she can dance on the mountaintops if she wants to. She can bend over and pick the flowers and smell them. Amen. And she can laugh. And I believe she's already there with her mother, Elisabetta. Yes. And they've already embraced. Mm. And her mother said, welcome, welcome home. I'm so glad you're here. And that's her message, I believe, to us. She's waiting to reach out to every family member and every dear friend, waiting for you when you come there. You're welcome. It's so good to see you. So I'd like to just pray a quick prayer of blessing over the family. So Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, I just praise you. I thank you. I ask you, Lord, that you would come and just bring your comfort and your peace. 
I ask you, Lord, that you would just let the joy of the knowledge of the wonderful thing that you have done and given to Virginia, but comfort everyone who remains behind, Lord, and also let it touch in our hearts that we'll see her again if we push through. So in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would bring your blessing and your peace over this family and her friends and her loved ones. In Jesus' name, amen. Just gonna say. At this point, uh, they would like to lower her down as we're losing daylight. Uh, they're going to start lowering her down. Uh, when she's down at the bottom, everyone has an opportunity to take a... Uh, a carnation and say their goodbyes and give a carnation to grandma if you would like to do that please do so and come up when it's safe when they tell you to come up and uh, and just give her a carnation and say your goodbyes and thank you for coming God bless everyone uh, we're going to sing a song as she is going to be lowered down and it's that Romanian song called La Revedere Ne Vom Vede so if you have a copy please help us sing
so much for grandma's life a beautiful legacy god we are so thankful that she's with you lord and we just ask for your blessing on the rest of us lord i ask that you would just 
Fill our hearts with your joy and your spirit and your love and peace and your comfort in this hour, Lord, as it is desperately needed, Lord. We are looking for your comfort. We ask that you would bless my mom and all my family, Lord, and John, just keep us all in the in your hand, Lord. And I just, may the Lord bless you and keep you, shine his face upon you, be gracious unto you, look upon you with favor, let his countenance rest upon you and give you shalom, restore you to wholeness. Amen. Okay. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank you for coming. Amen. Love you all. See you at the party. Oh, thank you. It was short. Short but sweet, right? <laughs> and uh, I like hearing the song. So then we were just fighting against each other. There was no microphone on here. That's what I mean. Yeah. Ok, thank you. N-a fost microfon și nu știu și pe ăștia aia a apucat acum să facă... I think it's from grandma to us. <laughs> Gina, nice, nice to see you. I don't know why I thought it was from grandma. Hi, Hey pups. Tata. So we're gonna come over here. Yeah. Oh, he's here. I'm taking up. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, guys, let's get the baskets because these guys have to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can, can you carry one real quick? Oh, I got it. Lydia. Lydia, my buddy. I just want to let you know that whatever flowers are left, uh, oh, uh, ours are. We have to get them here. Thanks, Papa. Come on, Papa. That's hot. No problem. Okay, da. Let's try to get the service. I think we have to. Cristi, oamenii ăștia vrea să îngropeze, dacă vrei, fă acum cu ei, cu când ia florile, Typically, that uh, spray that was on the casket will go on top. Okay, well, Christy, you and this, you okay. can see my duke, trade with the Okay, I think the Christy. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to Right. We'll have
Grab my shovel and help me shovel it. You have a rake? I don't have a rake. <coughs> Alright, go. I'll be right back. Sorry.
gator right there when we're digging that hole right over there. See how it see how it's going. Yeah, we will pick through. Took my rake out of my rig, so I don't know. I have no idea where it's at. Um, Just for the last two hours. Right. Yeah, we don't, yeah, we're gonna need rake real quick.